Hi everyone, it's Dixon here and today I'm going to be providing you with five important things that you need to know before you buy a MacBook Air M1. Let's find out what they are. One of the most frustrating things with the MacBook M1 means that actually Apple doesn't allow you to have more than one external monitor running natively from the laptop. So that means even if you plug in two USB-C connections to both ports on the laptop, you will only get output on one of those two monitors. So depending on your use, this could be a huge setback. The good news is there are ways around it. So I shared a separate video on how you can use DisplayLink to enable this via a docking station. Click on the video in the top corner to find out more but obviously this is not native it actually even requires the use of an old driver so it's not supported so well I've also found that actually things like text aren't so crisp on screen so when I'm using Windows 10 text is much crisper on my high resolution monitors but when I'm using my MacBook it is actually a little bit blurry and the resolution is extremely small which means actually text can be a little difficult to read at times something very important for you to consider especially if you're going to be setting this up for a professional use in graphic design or anything else. Next up is the actual M1 chip itself. So this is a silicon chip. All of the other apps which have gradually been optimized for Intel over the years, this includes things like the Adobe Suite, so with Photoshop and everything else, these haven't yet been fully optimized for the new M1 chip. So again, before you go ahead and consider purchasing this, you do need to go and check out on their website which apps are supported. I know there are some out there which are currently in beta version, but many others are probably not going to be updated until the middle of the year and no confirmed date has yet been announced by Adobe. So please consider this before you take a look. It's not all bad news. It does have Rosetta 2, which is available to emulate these Intel applications so that they run on the new M1 silicon chip, but obviously performance won't be quite so good as those optimized for the silicon chip itself. So again, a huge thing to consider if you're going to be using stuff like Adobe Photoshop on a regular basis. At the moment, this is probably not for you. A hot topic with a MacBook Air in one is the webcam. So I shared in my review, I think in general, it can be quite good if you've got very good lighting. So if it's in broad daylight and you've got some nice sunshine coming through the window on your face, it's probably going to be sufficient for your needs. But as soon as the light starts to dim a little, you'll notice you do get a lot of noise on your face and things do start to pixelate even more. Bearing in mind, this is a 720p camera. So you compare that to the likes of what you have on your phone, even my old iPhone XS it is far superior to what I've got on the MacBook. Remember though, of course, when you are actually joining a call on the internet, the quality will not be identical to what you see in your preview. It will, of course, be compressed to some extent in many cases, but something to bear in mind. Ironically, having the silicon chip means that Apple have been able to enhance the lighting when you're using the webcam, similar to on your smartphone. So it actually brightens your face very well in dark light, but because of the poor quality of the actual sensors themselves, you are going to get a very pixelated face and it's just not up to par with what we're used to on a daily basis with our phones. With this silicone chip, the acronym is SOC, so this is System on a Chip. It basically means that everything is welded onto that chip and you cannot make any changes or upgrades later. So when you are looking at the different specifications, when you're on that page to purchase, things like your RAM or the seven versus eight core GPU, you need to make that decision right now because you will not be able to amend it in that laptop. In terms of recommendations, I've looked around online, so you have the seven core GPU, which to be honest is probably perfectly adequate for many people out there and when it comes to the 8 core GPU depending on the applications or the games or whatever it is you want to run the actual gains can be quite minimal. Me personally I went for the 8 core GPU because I'm going to be using this laptop for all of my YouTube videos so I wanted that extra graphical power on the system. Similarly for the RAM so we've got 8 gigabyte versus 16 gigabyte. 8 gigabyte is probably perfectly adequate when you're looking online you're really going to 
focus on all the different numbers. And always remember that when it comes to things like the iPhone, the iPad, on paper, the specs are typically much worse than what the Android equivalents will offer. But because everything is optimized through the chips and the software with the operating system itself, it means that it does perform extremely well. And this M1 laptop is no exception. It performs extremely well. You'll see lots of videos around the line showing just how well the eight gigabyte laptop can perform. My advice, some people say not to worry so much about it, but I like to future proof it. A 16 gigabytes of RAM gives me plenty for what I need to use now and in the near future. And I think naturally over time, apps will of course start to demand more resources, something to be aware of. And finally, well, let's face it, it's still a lot of money, thousand pounds for the base model. Mine was around 1600 pounds here in the UK. So it's a lot of money. I decided to buy this because it was the perfect timing for me. I had a six year old MacBook Pro Prior to this, I could not manage to edit any 4K video without serious issues. So it was time for an upgrade. Bearing in mind, if you're not so desperate, I'd say it may actually be worth waiting until later this year. There's already rumors circulating the internet saying that Apple are working on a thinner and slimmer MacBook Air, which is crazy to believe. I know how thinking of how slim the existing model is, but with thinner bezels, a bigger screen, maybe even something like a mini LED screen where it has a higher contrast ratio and more vibrant colors. So if you're a bit worried about having a MacBook Air, which will look out of date quite soon, that's something to consider. I'm personally very pleased with the design. I don't think it's going to look horrendously out of date, but something for you to remember when you're looking around. So those are the five key things I think you need to consider before you purchase a MacBook Air M1. I hope that was useful. Please, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.